good afternoon to everyone all the delegates and first of all i would like to give a heartfelt thanks to the organizer of ps uh, g dr amit and dr rudu for giving me the opportunity to speak and this is one of the topic which is a bit interesting like hyperthyroidism in gdm so prior to going to the any story regarding this any case presentation i will just highlight i want to like highlight few points like hyperthyroidism and pregnancy is uncommon like uh, prevalence is 0.05 to 3% of the pregnancies more of that the clinical diagnosis of hyperthyroidism in pregnancy is difficult because the signs and symptoms are almost seen in all the normal pregnancies until unless you got the specific finding of like weight loss quarters or optonopathy and to complicate it more we find that the transient hyperthyroidism due to hyperemesis gravidum so that complicates the scenario a lot they are going to diagnose a case of hyperthyroidism we need to circulate uh, we need to confirm it by circulating free t4 uh, free t4 and tsh and already so there are several studies which is saying that the overt uh, hyperthyroidism overt hyper uh, hyperthyroidism documented with adverse overt hyperthyroidism has been documented with uh, adverse impact on pregnancy outcomes Despite its rarity, recognition and proper management of hyperthyroidism during the pregnancy is of utmost importance. So, the story of today's case is a lady, Mrs. Adorable, of 32 years, who is a homemaker, and uh, is a member of traditional Jain family, and a hobby of watching TV, painting, and dancing. So, he came to the clinic with reported problem of intolerance to heat, significant weight loss, uh, then pain of a neck, and Trauma. So, on examination, found that the uh, lady was at six month of primary at six month of pregnancy. Height was one fifty six, weight is sixty eight kg. Uh, blood pressure one thirty two by eighty. Fasting was uh, one twenty and BP was one sixty six. On examination, was found that the lady had a palpable painful decrease thyroid swelling, and the ESR was hundred ten and TSH was found out to be zero point zero zero nine. And if you look into uh, the case overview, we found that the family phenotype: the mother is overweight, father is obese, and there is a family history. Uh, there is a family history of diabetes and hypertension. So the diagnosis is that uh, primary at twenty-four week of gestation with GDM with hyperthyroidism. Uh, so now a relationship between. Thyroid function during normal pregnancy. The relationship it states that the pregnancy is a state of increased estrogenic state. Thereby we will find, uh, thereby we will find that in the increased serum uh, thyroxine binding globulin, which lead to the increased high serum T4 uh, total uh, T4 and T3 concentrations. So during the first trimester, the stimulating effect of beta hcg on the receptors cause the fall in serum tsh level in the first trimester but being aware of the uh, changes regarding the serum pre t4 tsh and beta hcg level throughout the pregnancy would be helpful for interpretations of the thyroid function test in hyperthyroid mothers so is that baby in the womb is at uh, risk so what do we know that the likelihood of developing fetal hyperthyroidism during uh, requiring treatment is related to level of maternal circulating uh, thyroid antibodies level then medicinal treatment given to the mother so it has been shown that in a study that trans uh, placental passage of stimulating maternal thyroid antibody uh, for hyperthyroidism or grave disease is 1.5% to the neonates on born to the mother grave disease so it passes the placenta and stimulates the fetal thyroid and can cause to fetal hyperthyroidism which may manifest as like fetal tachycardia goiter prematurity heart failure high drops so what can be the consequences of un, uh, untreated hyperthyroidism during pregnancies 
it can be like low birth weight it can be like prematurity it can be like eclampsia or the risk of miscarriage or like small bore uh, gestational age of infant so there are still there have been some controversies regarding like cell the grave disease untreated should be treated uh, should be treated or not treated and prior like our earlier speaker have already spoken about uh, gdm so only thing i want to highlight is that the the gdm have in the past 20 years it prevails have increased substantially substantially across the globe in multi uh, ethnic populations so what we are found seeing now is that one in six live births affected by hypoglycemia in pregnancy 80% of them are having mothers are having gdm so this is a, 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 a part like idea for we find that a south eastern re, uh, regions the highest number of uh, pregnancies with hypoglycemia in compared to the rest of uh, the world so now Uh, if you look into what the prevalence of diabetes and thyroid dysfunction, like in, from large European meta-analysis, they found that three point eight two percent of the uh, populations they have thyroid dysfunctions, and the prevalence uh, among those with uh, type two DM is significantly higher, like around forty eight percent. Now these are few recommendations saying about the thyroid screening. So mainly they are saying that. In any high-risk woman, the serum pH should be tested at the baseline, along with the reflex anti-TPO should be done if TSH is at a range of 2.5 to 10, and along with that, uh, thyroid palpitations and uh, serum pH should be monitored in your patients. But we don't have any sp uh, uh, like specific uh, criteria about for uh, thyroid screening in type 2 DM uh, patients uh, during pregnancy. But still, the things to be remember about that the excessive Circulating thyroid hormone in hyperthyroidism is associated with poor glycemic control, which can lead to hyperglycemia and insulinopenia. Like when uh, when a normal individual develops hyperthyroidism, nearly two to three percent of them develop overt uh, diabetes. Nearly fifty percent of those with diabetes uh, or with grave disease have some degree of glucose intolerances. Like thyroidosis can precipitate diabetic complications such as diabetic ketoacidosis. Then endothelial uh, dysfunctions increases the risk of cardiovascular comorbidities too. So, if you will compare, uh, if you look into the scenario of diabetes or like GDM with thyroid dysfunctions and pregnancy, we find a very complicated story, which will be like pregnancy hypertension, a patient on uh, the like they may end up with preeclampsia, they may have like postpartum hemorrhage, they may have preterm delivery along with low birth weight for the babies. Now, how this hypothyroidism affect? Because of uh, hyperthyroidism, what they leads to like increase in blood flow gene expressions and the glucose uptake in the skeletal muscles. So here they find that hyperthyroidism reduces the glucose induced uh, insulin secretions, uh, uh, whereas the hyperthyroidism enhances the response to beta cell functions with uh, glucose. So thyroid uh, hormone also increases the gl uh, glucagon secretion of pancreatic alpha cell. Found to have like insulin upper immune syndrome have been reported in Kali Major. So now, what can be the best choice of drug uh, with hypothyroidism in pregnancy? The mainly the treatment is about anti-thyroid drugs because in case of uh, pregnancy we cannot go with RAI or like surgery. So the treatment of choice will be like either methimazole or propyl thioracetals and Kali Major. So if you look at the pharmacokinetics, you find that methimazole is not altered in pregnancy. Then propyl thioracetal then in the first and second trimesters, and the use of PTU should that is propyl thioracetal should be restricted in the first trimester of uh, pregnancy only. And beta adrenergic blockers like uh, may be used, but need to be very much limited because there is also a possibility of intrauterine growth retardations, transient. Neutral hypoglycemia, apnea, and bradycardia. So now, uh, regarding about, we are always concerned about transplacental uh, passage of the molecules. If you will uh, see into both the molecule of uh, methimazole and uh, propyl thioracetal, you will find that even though it's said that the PTU is extensively bound to serum albumin, but uh, which is hypothetical uh, linked, but we found that the patients are most similar for both the molecules. 
then the studies uh, show that the transfer rate of across the placenta are independent of the perfusion and this might be due to the highly efficient placental extraction of unbound drug and also it has been shown that the for the uh, the level of propyl in the cord blood was higher than the maternal concentrations in hyperthyroid pregnant ladies And regarding the monitoring and adherence, like for any patient, we need to either start with maximum of 10 to 20 milli mg, or you can start with uh, PTU, like 100 to 200 mg. But the thing is that after third, after first trimester, we need to change the patient to methi muscle. And at the end of uh, like after every month, we need to check the patient's uh, free T4 in the upper level, uh, free T4 in the upper one third of each pressure specific intervals. Uh, serum, uh, TSH level of 1, 0 0.1 to 2 is appropriate, but if the uh, TSH is 0 0.1, is also acceptable if the patient is doing well clinically, and the serum T3-4 is within the appropriate range. So there is also, there can be a case where we can find we need, uh, the patient need to have like subtotal thyroidectomy. In that case, suppose like the patient is having uh, high uh, three, uh, Free T4 and serum TSH is low. And if you are finding that classical features of grip or disease, then we we'll go with the uh, um, medical uh, management. Suppose the patient is having that, that the same pregnant lady is having the like weight loss, nausea, or vomiting, then we have to go for a ultrasonography and we, we find that there is a high for more than yeah, we can get it. That, okay, we need to go for and the supportive thyroidectomy and the surgical procedures, all everything. Otherwise, we need, like, if the patient is having gestational thyroidopsychosis, then we need to give a supportive treatment. So in case of like uh, uh, earlier, the, the, our Dr. Rakesh Parikh sir have already spoken about the uh, treatment of GDM. And what I will just try to highlight about the insulin is the preferred medication for treating hyperglycemias. So the conclusion is that thyroid dysfunctions can worsen uh, type 2 DM and diabetes and can worsen the thyroid function too. So anti-diabetic drugs can alter thyroid function and anti-thyroid drugs can also alter glycose control. So, considering into the clinical implications of co uh, coexistence of type 2 DM and thyroid dysfunctions, and more systematic approach of thyroid testing on type 2 DM is needed. Regular monitoring of glycemic control with thyroid dysfunction is also suggested. More research is warranted to study the relationship between type 2 DM and thyroid dysfunctions, and especially more about uh, hyperthyroidism uh, in GDM because uh, literature is very, very sparse to get it. So to conclude the story that Mrs. Adorable was treated with and followed up as an with antithyroid drug, lifestyle and dietary modification have been done because he can uh, that's was uh, came into control with lifestyle and uh, diet modifications because no uh, drug was needed over the period of next pregnancy uh, over the period of next second and th uh, third trimesters and was monitored monthly and uh, delivered and healthy turned good and released in the four days after delivery. Thank you.